As the search narrows for the channel's Evolution Sportster pick, there's a clear line between 1986 to 2006 models and the 2007 newer models. 1986 to 2006 Sportsters have carburetors. In 2007, EFI became standard on all 883 and 1200 engines. This is an important choice when considering a pre-owned Evolution Sportster. So let's begin with carburation. Until the mid-90s, carburetors were the sole induction system on all Harley-Davidson V-Twins. Although the pre-war through Ironhead era carburetors are nostalgic and artful in their simplicity, we'll focus on the 1986-2006 Evolution Sportster fuel systems. The Sportster used two distinct carburetor types, both made by Kayan. A mechanical carburetor without electronic feedback is often called a mixer. Its role is to mix and atomize fuel drawn into the engine. Atmospheric air is drawn through the air filter and into the venturi or throat of the carburetor. This flow of air is regulated by a mechanical valve controlled by the operator's throttle. I like that word, operator. The description dates to the earliest motorcycles. On a carbureted Sportster, the throttle cable connects the handlebar throttle to the carburetor's butterfly throttle valve. Harley-Davidson carburetors have never been complicated. Linkert, Tillotson, Bendix, and Kayan have supplied carburetors to the motor company. Having worked with complex automotive carburetors like the Rochester Quadrajet and Japanese hybrid emissions carburetors packed with solenoids, the Sportster carburetors are easy to service and rebuild. For troubleshooting, rebuilding, or adjusting specifications, I use the Harley-Davidson service manual covering the Sportster model year. I have the 1986 to 1990 factory manual in my library. Kayan offers online details as well. The 1986-1987 Sportster models feature a carryover Kayan 34mm butterfly carburetor from the late Ironhead era. The fixed Venturi design works well on a larger displacement motorcycle engine. Kayan carburetors are generally easy to tune and adjust. Jets can be changed for engine modifications like a compression boost and hotter camshafts, a big bore kit, or for operating the motorcycle at various altitudes. A unique feature necessary for better throttle response during acceleration or burst of throttle is the accelerator pump. The fixed Venturi carburetor is basic and fail-safe. At startup, it takes manifold vacuum to start airflow through the 34mm bore. The throttle cable rotates the throttle valve, which exposes the amount of air and fuel demanded by the operator. At full throttle, the throttle valve is completely open, and the 34mm bore flows all the air fuel that the Venturi and main jet's fuel orifice will allow. The fuel supply to the carburetor is straightforward. The fuel tank has a shut-off petcock with strainer. Fuel flows by gravity to the carburetor's float bowl. The float lifts a needle valve that shuts off fuel when the valve seats. The adjustable float height determines the precise fuel level in the float bowl. Float level is an important setting for any carburetor. See the channel's clear tube method video for how to quickly check the float height of most motorcycle carburetors. Once in the float bowl, fuel flows through the carburetor's three fuel circuits based on throttle demand and the engine's load. The circuit diagrams show the system working. Follow the purple air fuel flow to see where the mixture sources its fuel on each circuit. You can see how the airstream and low pressure vacuum or venturi effect play a role. The fuel flow volume is controlled by the orifice size in the slower pilot jet and the main jet's orifice. Regardless of manifold vacuum, a fixed Venturi carburetor relies on Venturi effect to draw fuel into the carburetor's throat where it mixes with moving air and atomizes before entering the intake manifold. Venturi effect results from the intake airstream being necked down to the Venturi diameter as air moves through the carburetor's bore. Sizing down then reopening creates a low pressure draw. This low pressure draw or vacuum at the Venturi area moves fuel through the jets and passageways and into the carburetor's throat. Here, the fuel atomizes or mixes with the airstream before moving through the intake manifold and into the engine. Throttle opening position, air velocity at the Venturi, and engine load or manifold vacuum will determine which of the three circuits flow fuel. 
Each circuit has fuel passageways. There are transitions and overlaps between the circuits. Functions are purely mechanical and based on airflow, the design of the fuel circuits, and Venturi effect. The color diagrams show the actual flow of air and fuel for each circuit. The first circuit is the idle circuit. This system functions at an engine idle, lower speeds, and to a degree at intermediate speeds. On this KN fixed Venturi carburetor, I think of this circuit as the idle, tip-in, and up to one-quarter throttle, ranging from closed to only partly open. Fuel flows through the fixed size main jet, then gets metered down further through the slow or pilot jet. There's also a slow air jet. Air moving through the slow air jet mixes with fuel in a bleed tube that feeds from the slow jet. The adjustable idle mixture screw is on this circuit. This carburetor uses a butterfly throttle valve and not a slide. Those familiar with no frills KN or Amel dirt or high performance motorcycle carburetors, like the KN PE series on my Honda XR650R engine, expect to see a needle attached to a slide with a needle opening the fuel flow through the main jet and into the carburetor throat's venturi. The slide lifts mechanically as the throttle cable pulls the spring loaded slide upward. Instead, the 1986 and 1987 Sportster carburetor is more like an automotive design with bleed tubes and venturi effect or vacuum drawing fuel into the airstream. There is no needle. As the throttle opens to the mid range circuit, it still draws fuel and air through the idle circuit's transfer ports. It then adds a direct supply of fuel from the float bowl. This is a combination of mixed air and fuel from the idle circuit and fuel from the well in the fuel bowl. In the third or high speed circuit, fuel comes through the main bleed tube and is a mixture of air from the main air jet and fuel from the bowl. The fuel is flowing strictly through the main jet at this point and gets drawn into the venturi with a nearly open or fully open throttle valve. There is also an accelerator pump on this carburetor. Again, something borrowed from automotive carburation. The pump primes from an eccentric on the throttle shaft that pushes the pump rod and a pump diaphragm downward. The diaphragm pushes fuel through a check valve and pump nozzle into the venturi. This shot of fuel into the venturi helps prevent throttle lag when the throttle gets blipped. For cold starting, there is also a cable controlled choke valve in the opening of the carburetor throat. This knob and the choke linkage provide two functions. One is the enrichment needed to keep the engine running smoothly when cold. The other is to rotate an eccentric that opens the throttle slightly to speed up the idle and keep it stable with the choke valve closed or partially closed as the engine warms. 1988 and newer carbureted Sportsters through model year 2006 use a constant velocity carburetor, the KNCV40. Constant velocity carburetors are found on many road motorcycles. One reason is the unique variable venturi size controlled by a vacuum diaphragm and a piston. The piston reduces and increases the airflow area or venturi size. Venturi low pressure creates a vacuum draw above the diaphragm and main jet bleed tube. A needle attaches to the piston and seats at the needle jet. As the needle rises and opens, fuel rises out of the main jet and its bleed tube. The main air jet feeds into the main air bleed tube. These CV carburetors have fixed jet sizes and a factory adjusted needle height setting. Venturi vacuum pulls the vacuum diaphragm and piston upward. This opens the needle and increases the venturi size simultaneously. While Venturi vacuum pulls the diaphragm upward, the balance spring pushes downward against the piston and its attached needle. The curved bottom of the vacuum piston changes the shape of the Venturi to help maintain a constant velocity of airflow through the Venturi. In automotive terms, this design is essentially a variable Venturi carburetor. Ford played with an automotive variable Venturi carburetor as a stopgap emissions solution before adopting EFI. The CV carburetor provides a more precise response to throttle and fuel demands. The diaphragm and vacuum piston are affected by atmospheric pressure changes. This helps keep the carburetor from overfueling the engine as altitude increases. With this carburetor, just opening the throttle is not enough. 
the engine's load, throttle position, atmospheric pressure, and carburetor airflow velocity move the diaphragm and vacuum piston. A constantly changing venturi shape assures the right amount of fuel and an air-fuel ratio that provides more complete fuel burn. The needle rises and sets according to the diaphragm's movement, which cannot be overridden by the operator's hand on the throttle. This feature was a response to tightening emission standards during the Evolution Sportster era. Honda popularized the use of KNCV carburetors on a wide range of road bikes. By contrast, bonafide dirt and dural bikes, sold for off-highway use only, use a fixed venturi carburetor. A fixed venturi carburetor provides instant throttle response without regard for exhaust emissions. Fixed venturi Mikuni or KN slide carburetors are often sold as aftermarket performance products with the labels for off-highway use only or not for use on public roads. There was a time not that long ago when California recognized the advantages of more motorcycles and less heavy vehicles on the road. Dirt motorcycles could be converted to a dual sport and licensed for street use. Motorcycles were exempt from emissions inspections for registration purposes, and to the present they still are. New motorcycles manufactured for sale in California or 49 state use on public roads do require EPA or combined EPA California 50 state emissions equipment that complies with mandated tailpipe pollution limits. In the evolution era, emission controls target both tailpipe pollutants and evaporative fuel fumes. By 1988, Sportster exhaust emission limits could still be met with the constant velocity CVH carburetor. While the big twins gradually transitioned to EFI from the mid-90s forward, the Sportster's clean break from carburetors was not until 2007. All Evolution Sportsters required an evaporative emission system that takes care of fuel vapors. Tailpipe emission standards were met by the KN CV40 constant velocity carburetor. Select models had a catalytic converter or converters in either one or both exhaust streams. To its credit, the KN CV40 constant velocity carburetor met emissions compliance long after a fixed Venturi carburetor would have done so. From a riding standpoint, a CV40 carburetor with a vacuum diaphragm and needle has a unique ability to compensate for altitude changes. Altitude changes, atmospheric pressure, and the vacuum diaphragm respond accordingly. In a leaner atmosphere on a Sierra or Rocky Mountain Pass, the spring balance diaphragm lifts less from the main jet's bleed tube. This decreases fuel flow to maintain a more accurate air-fuel ratio for proper combustion. In this regard, a CV carburetor is certainly more efficient than a fixed Venturi carburetor. Both carburetor types are way less efficient than EFI. As a footnote, higher altitude is an atmosphere with thinner air that not only affects air-fuel ratios, but also has an impact on engine compression and combustion efficiency. When we ride our naturally aspirated motorcycles up a grade, there is a loss of approximately 3% of the engine's horsepower for each 1,000 feet of elevation. On a 10,000-foot pass in Colorado, a Sportster engine, whether carbureted and jetted properly or with EFI, will produce approximately 70% of its normal power at sea level. The only way to restore this lost power is with supercharging or turbocharging. This boost pressurizes and compresses the thin atmospheric air into a denser mixture. Turbo diesels were necessary for commercial trucks to climb Colorado's original Loveland Pass at 11,990 feet elevation on old U.S. Highway 6. For cold starting, a 1988 to 2006 Sportster with a KNCV40 carburetor, there is a fuel enrichment or choke circuit. The CV40 does not use a choke butterfly type valve like the earlier fixed Venturi carburetor. Key adjustments and tuning options on these KN carburetors are the float level, pilot or slow jet, and the main jet. In the factory shop manual, Jet or needle position changes are not mentioned for the CV40. This is an emissions-regulated carburetor. For altitude adjustments on the 1986 and 1987 Sportster's fixed Venturi carburetor, replacing the main jet is advised. 4,000 feet elevation is Harley-Davidson's point of concern. If the fixed Venturi carburetor is stock with a sea-level tune, 
Each 4,000 feet of elevation increase will require a leaner main jet. This is especially important if the engine operates at a higher elevation for an extended period of time. The channel's home base is 4,100 feet, and local riding goes to 8,000 feet. I would rejet a stock 1986 or 87 Sportster for 4,000 feet. A trip down to sea level would require installing the original, richer main jet. If rejetting gets overlooked, a rich running condition can harm the engine. Running too rich can fuel wash the cylinders of vital oil, flood the engine during startup, dilute the oil, build up carbon, carbon foul the spark plugs, or cause the engine to run poorly. When jetted leaner for a higher altitude, dropping altitude and running too lean can cause an engine misfire, burn up the spark plugs, cause ping or detonation, and make the engine run excessively hot. Piston damage or seizure could result.